The next bit of information is actually patch notes. I see you guys talking about the patch notes. Yes, I am fully aware of the patch notes. I gave a little bit of information on it last night, but I'll go into detail here and some of my opinions on it. So it looks like um, Pokemon Unite is getting some balance changing balance changes when it comes to the new Halloween event. And that's going to take place on October 20th, again, alongside the release of Greedent. So we're going to go into the changes right now and kind of what I think about it, right? So uh, obviously we're going to be adding Greedent to the role, which, uh, to the roster, which is great. We get the new Halloween night uh, in the stadium. So we'll get like a theme, part. you know, it's going to be thematic to Halloween, which is really good. I love Halloween, by the way. I'm a huge World of Warcraft player. So... I'm a huge fan of anything Halloween. I love doing the Halloween stuff. Um, and wow, so I'm happy to see it in here. Uh, it says, uh, replaces battle items with pumpkins that can be thrown, used to be thrown at your opponents in Pokemon. That's interesting. It replaces your battle items with pumpkins that can be used to throw at your opponents. I don't know if that does anything. I don't really know what that means. I'm assuming that every time you use your battle item, it will throw a pumpkin, I guess. Like, so if I... Flash? It uses a pumpkin? I don't know. Um, we've seen it in the trailer, right? Like, uh, oh gosh, I, I guess I should have had that trailer up, right? We've seen it when Lucario did it. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up real quick. Uh, and of course, it's not easy to bring up. Here we go. So, like, we've seen it in the trailer, right? Um, when Lucario throws the... Right there. Uh, so I'm assuming this is what they're talking about, right? Um, if it will play it here. Yeah, here we go. So that's the item they're talking right there. So he just threw it right there. So I'm assuming that's the, uh, that is the item right there. And so it's a giant pump. Look at the pumpkin up there. So. I wonder if every time you use your ability, it just throws a pumpkin out like that. That's on the actually move. You can move with the pumpkins. That's hilarious. So that's the item they're talking about uh, in the um, the patch notes. But we'll go we'll go a little bit more into the patch notes, right? All right. So it says Pikachu, uh, hit the thunder and volt tackle uh, has been increased. And this is really good. I love playing Pikachu. Pikachu is my favorite Pokemon. So I'm happy to see Pikachu getting buff. Hopefully that means that Pikachu can be played. I know I want to play Greedent in the jungle, but if like Pikachu was ever viable in the jungle, um, man, that'd be great. Can you zoom in? Yeah, I can zoom in. Um, I would hope that, uh, you know, Pikachu becomes uh, a viable. If, if, if Pikachu becomes viable, man, I, I'd be great. I'd be super happy if that's the case. I, I, oh my God. Like I love playing Pikachu. So both Thunder and Volt Tackle are getting buffed. I like Thunder. Volt Tackle's good. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Slowbro, um, Amnesia is getting their cooldown decreased, so it looks like they're going to be buffing Amnesia. I guess they want more people to play Amnesia. I mean, Amnesia is really not that good. A lot of people don't play it. You know, when you're picking Slowbro, Slowbro is more of that control type Pokemon. Um, that's really what you're picking him for, is for his massive amounts of just control and CC that he has in a lane. I think Slowbro is okay. I think he works mostly in certain situations, especially people who like to dive the back line, maybe like a talent flame. Um, really not much here. We'll see what Amnesia does. Now the Gengar change is interesting, right? So at level five, you're going to deal special damage, right? You will recover your health based on damage inflicted. So basically they're giving him spell vamp. Um, now that's good. I think Gengar needs it. Ever since, you know, when Gengar was an absolute terror, they nerfed him. They nerfed him hard. They hit him really hard with the bat. So I think his, this is this way of them trying to, like, bring Gengar back into the game. But ultimately, I think what's going to change whether or not Gengar is here, it's going to come down to, like, uh, what happens with Lucario. So that's nice that he's getting spell vamp, I guess. You know, we may see him in the jungle. I mean, at, at the end of the day, speedsters are, are basically useless anyway, right? So I think this is them trying to get speedsters, like, back into it. Uh, here's Blastoids, right? Uh, hydro Pump damage, uh, decreased damage uh, from Hydro Pump. And then we got Water Spout cooldown decrease, which is good for Water Spout, bad for Hydro Pump. Uh, hydro Typhoon, 
Uh, and this is great, f I mean, excuse me, bad for Hydro Typhoon, which is his ultimate, right? So for the Hydro Pump, they are basically uh, in 13 runs to a maximum, right? So they're just basically nerfing this hardcore and they're gonna, they're completely sh shaving off a lot of damage on his ultimate. I mean, ultimately, his ultimate really was too strong, right? Um, his ultimate really is too powerful. Now, I think the reason why I don't think Blastoise is totally out of hand, especially in the higher elos, is because the problem with Blastoise is that he sucks in a lot of XP. So it's really hard to manage a Blastoise, especially when you have a Venusaur. Because a lot of top teams, we like to run Venusaur uh, because Venusaur is just too good, right? So when you run a Venusaur and a Blastoise, it's kind of hard to manage that XP and get the XP done correctly. So you could have your power spikes at the appropriate time, like when Dreadnought spawns. Or just being ready for each Dreadnought spawn, really. And contesting and protecting your bottom goal. And having your ultimates ready. So, yeah, it sucks. He's getting nerfed. I think this will essentially just kind of turn him more into a CC tank. And that'll be it. Uh, I don't think that this is really good for Blastoids at all. That's my opinion on it. So now we got Venusaur. Uh, Venusaur, now this is the guy who needs... He's one of the guys that needs the nerf. If there's two people who needs a nerf, it's going to be Venusaur and Lucario. Um, so Venusaur, Giga Drain, reduce the effect, uh, reduce effect on damage reduction on Venusaur after use. Ouch. <laughs> so they made him less tanky. Uh, Giga Drain, decrease HP recovery. Uh, it doesn't show what it is. This is the big one. These two here basically shut down Venusaur, which I am so happy to see. Let me tell you, so excited to see that. Um, solar beam damage, uh, buff. Great. So solar beam may come back. Solar beam, uh, originally was really irritating to deal with because basically people were running Venusaur because Venusaur was like the best smiter in the game. Like it was better than Lucario, right? And people were like, well, power up punch does so much damage. You can secure so many objectives, but you have to go in deep to secure the objective with Lucario and power up punch. And if you go power up punch and Lucario, that means you don't have extreme speed which makes it a little bit more difficult to get out of a, you know, a tight situation like bone. If, you, you basically only have bone rush, right? And with extreme speed, you know, you get two ways to get out, get in and get out. Um, so if a Lucario took power up punch, they're great secures, but Venusaur Solar Beam or the original one was insane because he can literally sit at his goal and basically still Dreadnought, right? Now I know that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but he literally didn't have to be anywhere near the team fight in order to last hit any objective. So they destroyed Solar Beam, and it looks like they are buffing it back up, which is great. However, what makes uh, Venusaur too powerful right now is this Giga Drain. Because the way Giga Drain works is that your pedal dance, every time your pedal dance hits an opponent, it reduces the cooldown on your Giga Drain. Every time you Giga Drain, you get a defense stat, and you also have the ability to heal. You basically steal health from a player or players who are caught in Giga Drain. And it basically creates Venusaur to be like the most tankiest tank. Um, you know what I mean? So like basically Venusaur turns into the best damage dealer, the best tank, the best healer, all because of Giga Drain. So this is why everyone run Venusaur. I'm happy to see the nerf to it. This is great. Let's get Venusaur out of the meta. I'm tired of playing them and I'm tired of seeing them. It's a super boring Pokemon to play. It's just boring. Uh, I'm happy to see that. Uh, Lucario, uh, this is the big one. So Lucario is the number one thing in the meta, right? So Lucario solo top. This is the guy that's really going to change the meta. You know, if we can nerf Lucario, then we're basically going to change the meta. And it looks like that's what they're doing. So they're just flat out reducing his attack. And everything he does is based off of attack, right? So they're just flat out just nerfing his attack uh, by 440. So they're hitting him hard, I think. Um, and now his uh, passive, Steadfast, will also activate. Um, if the frequency of activator has been lowered. And then Aurora Cannon, basically, it just fixed a bug that increased the damage after he did power up punch. Really what this tells me is that if we can really nerf the Lucario, this is going to change the meta the most because as it stands right now, the meta, the entire meta is based off of just running Lucario solo top, putting a hyper carry in the jungle, basically getting the hyper carry as fed as possible, 
and running supports and tanks basically in the bot lane and protecting your Venusaur, right? Whereas Lucario just steals everything top and steals objectives top and, you know, move, works his way down and applies uh, pressure bot. Um, so I'm happy to see that nerf to Lucario. It, it's needed and we need to get Lucario out of the meta and or at least bring him down to where other Pokemon can fight him. Because if other Pokemon can fight him, then you're going to start to see a very interesting meta change, especially that they're nerfing Venusaur and Lucario. We're going to see a lot of different comps. So I'm very happy about the Lucario change. Uh, Garchomp, I mean, who cares? I mean, they're increases in attack speed. They're increasing his damage to Dragon Rush. Look, it is, this Pokemon is just the worst. I, I think he just needs to be like a, a defender. Because I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make a very powerful melee attacker. That's, that's like, you know, the punishment of Garchomp is like once he gets on you, he just does so much damage. But the problem with Garchomp is that A, he's, he takes him way too much XP. And, and there's way better Pokemon that you can put there who absorbs that XP. Like, for example, um, Garbodor um, is just way better, in my opinion. If you want like a XP hungry Pokemon, she, her ultimate is insane. And she does. She won't die as much as a Garchomp. Um, so we'll see if he gets better. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, this is interesting, too, the Zorora change. It says it fixed a bug that caused more damage than expected when hitting multiple Pokemon. That's kind of big, actually, because Zorora, his, his, his wild charge is what makes him so scary. Um, that is what makes Zorora really scary is that he has the ability to like just do a bunch of damage to like three or four people immediately. So if they're saying that there's a bug that's making him do more damage uh, than expected, I don't know what that means for Zorora. That's, that's kind of bad news. Um, Cramorant, not really anything there. Um, they're just fixing bugs on Gale Rings. Now, this is interesting too, right? So we finally got our first nerf to Zapdos. This reduces the energy obtained after a KO. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I get what they're doing. So basically what they're trying to do here, I believe, is that if an enemy team steals Zapdos from you after you've been in the lead for so long, the chance of them winning is going to be lowered. Because a lot of times when you take Zapdos, a lot of people have already obtained a lot of orbs. Um, it's like, you know, I'm usually around 50. Right. And a lot of people are around 50. That's why you get 100 dunks, 100 dunks, 100 dunks. And I think what they're trying to do here is basically bring it more in line of like, let's say you're dominating the whole game and you lose the Zapdos fight. They're not going to immediately get five, 600 points. Yeah, they'll still be able to go dunk, but they're not going to dunk 600 on you. You know, maybe they'll dunk 300 on you and kind of make it a more of a nail biter because it's not a nail biter when someone steals Zapdos. If someone steals Zapdos from you, you basically just lose. Um, so I think that's what they're doing here. So I think Zapdos uh, reducing the energy. I mean, it's true, right? If you took away all the orbs from Zapdos, then like if someone stole it from you, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? Who cares? Uh, so I think this is good. This will help curb that nasty taste you get after you just completely dominate all game. And then like in the last minute of the game, you lose Zapdos and you just lose the game. So like nine minutes of work is just totally useless. I think that's what they're fixing there. Uh, this is really interesting, too. I think this is more important. Uh, the Dreadnought. So they're going to reduce the amount of shield you get from killing Dreadnought and the amount of XP you get from Dreadnought. Um, at the same time, they're going to be buffing uh, Rotom, um, which is really interesting. So at top level play, for a lot of people who don't know, basically Dreadnought is the most important thing in the game. Whoever gets Dreadnought first usually has about an 80% chance to win the game. Because the game is only 10 minutes long. So whoever gets that XP advantage, it, you, you just snowball with it. You just, you just go on to win. And a lot of times we ignore Rotom. And the reason why we ignore it is because you actually want the enemy team to think, oh, I can take Rotom. I'll break their top goal, right? That's actually in your favor because you'll spawn on Dinos on your side that will actually give you more XP and let you catch up in experience versus if they didn't break it because if they didn't break it then the bees will still be closer to them oh you're in the middle right because when they break top lane bees come closer to you and you get a bunch of audinos that spawn on your side and it just becomes much easier there's even like a there's there's an extra um craw crawdant whatever uh, crawfish that pops in your jungle on your side 
So you actually don't care about Rotom. So I think what they're doing here is they're trying to make it to where if you lose that first Dreadnought, the game isn't over. Because as it currently stands, if you lose first Dreadnought, the correct response basically is to farm your jungle and push bot as hard as you can. And if they take Rotom and break your top goal, great. You're, that's fine, right? So if you lose Dreadnought, you farm up your jungle, you farm up your side, and then you strong push their bot and try to push in as deep as you can before next, before, before next Dreadnought. So you basically forget about Rotom. And so what I think what they're doing here is they're saying, hey, if you lose Dreadnought, you should go for Rotom. And if you lose Dreadnought, the game isn't over. Sure, they'll be ahead, but the game isn't going to be one-sided after that. You're not going to immediately go on the defensive because that's how the game is played. Um, that, that's basically how the game is played right now, right? So if you lose Dreadnought, you immediately go on defense, right? You're like, guys, they lost Dreadnought. We got to farm. We got to go on defensive. We can't contest anything. We got to strong push their bot. We got to try to get back into the game. So I think that's what they're doing here. I think they're moving the needle to where it's a little bit more balanced in the sense of like, um, how the objectives play out in the overall game. So I think it's a good change. That, that's what I'm getting. I think this is good. I think this will do nothing to change the meta in terms of like the one, one, three comp Lucario top. What is going to change the meta is this nerf. So we'll see how bad Lucario gets hit. If, and I want him to get wrecked, right? Cause I'm tired of seeing Lucario top. Um, so I'm happy to see that that's what's going to change the meta, period. Because there's really no better Pokemon top than Lucario. It's just the way it is. I know some people like to make the argument that Mr. Mime can, can test things. But realistically, I mean, at the end of the day, Lucario is just better. Um, but yeah, and then obviously the Giga Drain nerf here. Happy to see Venusaur get wrecked. Please take both of these guys out of the meta. Please. Take them out, throw them away, and let's actually have different comps finally that, like, you know, people can make actual, I don't know, strategies around instead of, yeah, we need Lucario. <laughs> yeah, we need Venusaur. You know, so I don't know. Overall, I think it's good. I can't wait to see how it gets implemented. We'll have to see where Lucario is at. That's what's really going to control the meta. I am happy to see that now Dreadnought is getting reduced. We'll see the effects once it goes live. I don't think that just means Rotom is more important. I don't think that you'll ever prioritize Rotom over Dreadnought. I do think, however, if you lose Dreadnought, it's going to be completely okay um, to, you know, still play aggressively and not go on the defensive because you miss some XP. I'm happy to see that Zapdos um, is going to be changed to where if you're dominating the game and you get it stolen from you, you don't lose the game. So what? They stole it. Um, that's great to hear. I think it won't change anything in terms of the objective meta, but I hope that the comp meta will change because of the Venusaur and Lucario. So that's my opinions on the patch notes. Uh, you guys let me know what you think and hopefully it's good. I'll be seeing you guys in the game.